<laughs> uh, well, I think, uh, yeah, the expedition went incredibly well. It was, um, in a lot of ways, uh, more successful than I think we would have imagined. So we were able to, uh, to achieve the, the primary objectives of the, the project, so that included uh, successful installation of two observatories, one that crossed the fault zone that we think may participate in slow slip. A uh, second observatory in the hanging wall above uh, uh, the high slip area of a slow slip. Uh, so those will provide data for decades, we hope, um, through many cycles of slow slip events. And then we also collected uh, core samples of the materials that are coming in into the slow slip zone on the incoming subducting plate. and we. Uh, cord and sampled across a small shallow fault zone that we think may also participate in slow slip. Essentially all of our objectives achieved and I am really kind of shocked and amazed that we pulled it off because it was pretty, a pretty complex set of objectives and it's all gone off really, really well. So to pull this off, we've been sailing with about 30 scientists for two months. You know, we get to work with people from different cultures. Um, different ways of uh, approaching science. There's also challenges that come with that. We speak different languages, you know, we uh, like to eat different kinds of foods, but somehow we manage to, you know, do it all and do it right and do it on time. You know, the cores that we've gotten are really our first look at what types of rocks are going into the Hikarangi subduction zone and are involved in this process of slow slip events. So I think these samples that we've collected are really going to enable some major discoveries and, and breakthroughs in our understanding of why slow slip events happen, what is their relationship to earthquakes, and, and what makes these major subduction plate boundaries tick. One of the really exciting things about this expedition is that so much of it is, uh, is kind of the lifetime beyond the drilling. So the drilling itself, you collect materials and describe everything, which is kind of fundamental. But then um, it's kind of like a gift that keeps on giving for another five to ten years. So people will have these samples and conduct experiments in their laboratories. And so those are our data sets and, and will provide insights into earthquakes and slow slip for you know, starting a year or two from now and extending for probably five years or more in terms of the experimental studies, the data that come out of those laboratories, the students that are that are working on those projects for their PhDs and master's degrees. Um, and then the observatories themselves, of course, are meant to be there as, as permanent installations. And so the idea is we'll go back and collect the data and collect the OSMO samplers and temperature sensors uh, in about four or five years. And at that time, um, if we're able to, and if we're able to get funding to do it, we'll, we'll replace them for another cycle of measurements that may last another five five or so years. The thing that I'm really excited about are these observatories. I've spent most of my scientific career using global positioning system data on land to study these slow slip events. These observatories are going to present an incredible opportunity to actually be able to monitor slow slip events in the offshore region over long periods of time and we're going to really essentially get a front row seat right where the slow slip events are happening as close to them as we could possibly be and really transform our understanding of how these things happen.